So finally, there's a lot of stuff that's that's kind of missing from our models and missing from most models of visual processing. Um, a lot of models are ma are missing uh, meaningful depth processing. This is a random dot stereogram. If you kind of stare at this in the right way, you can get your eyes to go wall-eyed and uh, actually see a bird flying out of the page. If you see the bird kind of as a whole, uh, kind of behind the page, that means you're crossing your eyes. You need to actually make your eyes go wide. Uh, it's very kind of difficult to do, but you can do it if you spend hours uh, focusing on it, and you'll be rewarded by seeing this amazing, very pixely kind of uh, bird emerging out of this sort of random sea of dots. Now, we also have a lot of kind of 2D cues to depth beyond just kind of the stereoscopic kind of fine binocular sources of, stere of uh, depth. And so this is a classic example of a, how we see depth from shading. Uh, this is also a kind of Escher-esque uh, impossible figure, which is fun. Uh, so classic kind of train track kind of version of these depth cues, parallel lines receding in depth. Uh, therefore, these this line here seems much wider, much uh, longer than this line. In fact, they're exactly the same length. Um, and again, people have leveraged these in very interesting and creative ways. Uh, in sidewalk art, for example, you, you really perceive this as like a, a full uh, waterfall cascade, but it's actually just a flat surface of concrete. And it only looks like this when you look at it in the right perspective. Um, this is one of, I think, the most dramatic and important examples that is not accounted for by existing models. And the kind of crazy idea here is that the actual illumination, the actual color value, you know, we can go into RGB inspector in this image and see that the actual kind of uh, pixel values in this particular region are identical to that in this B region. You just can't be. They perceptually, this looks very dark, this looks very light. How could it possibly be? But in fact, one way that you can convince yourself is by drawing these vertical lines and you see no edge in either case. And these don't have any gradients. And also you can pull it up with an, a, an inspector in a paint program and see it's exactly the same RGB values in both cases. And so this tells us that our visual system is really integrating these kind of shadow effects, these contrast effects of neighboring cues and these kind of more global uh, effects of uh, the scene. Um, and this really fits with an overall kind of uh, attractor dynamic, uh, top-down, bottom-up kind of bi-directional overall interpretation of what we're seeing much more so than a kind of localized individual separate feature analysis. And so there's lots of examples in vision of gestalt uh, features, gestalt processing, these kinds of global effects that really are not well captured on existing deep neural networks, which again tend to be very much feed forward and don't have this kind of real rich uh, structured knowledge about the world. And so there are a lot of opportunities even still to to capture a lot more about how human vision works compared to uh, what's what's happening in machine vision at this time. This is another classic popular press example. Uh, you may remember uh, this kind of viral uh, picture where uh, there's a strong individual difference in how people see this. Some people see it as blue and black. Some people see it as white and gold. Some people see it as blue and brown. Um, I just for the life of me can't not see it as white and gold mostly, maybe slightly blue, but really nothing like what it actually is. Apparently it really is blue and black. So those of you who do see it as blue and black um, are seeing it more correctly, but I just, I see it as white and gold. I just can't see it the other way. And so that strong individual difference, which was really the source of the, the viral effect, shows us that we're really integrating these kind of back lit illumination and these contrast effects even fairly differently in different visual systems. So this philosophical question of is the red you see the same the red that I see? Apparently in this case the answer is no. We actually see things differently, some of us. And so uh, that's pretty striking. There was a more recent example in the auditory domain 
which also showed a very strong divergence of individual differences. All these kinds of illusions, this one is particularly uh, kind of annoying, <laughs> that you know, uh, show us that in fact our visual systems are really constructing this uh, illusion of what we perceive um, and we can trick our visual systems into seeing things that aren't really there uh, by carefully constructing uh, stimuli that take advantage of the kind of tricks that our eyes are doing. And so in this case, um, actually your visual saccades as you kind of look around create this illusion of motion as, as these kind of contrast, blue and, and yellow contrasts sweep across your retina as your eyes move. And here's more diabolical cases where you can see if you stare at these uh, and allow your eyes to move that uh, they rotate and you can really see if you can hold your eyes steady they stop so you can see that it really is about the saccades but it's hard to do that so lots of interesting cases for further modeling work to understand the richer complexities of how our visual systems work <laughs>